Why would VGK want to sign 35-year-old free agent Patrick Kane? Our discussion next right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone. The start of a new week. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. Please subscribe to our Lockdown Golden Knights YouTube channel. We are brought to you today by FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash Lockdown. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Prior to signing with the Detroit Red Wings, Chris, it was said this past season that VGK was one of the final choices for Patrick Kane. He had been linked to the VGK before, the pending UFA, three-time Stanley Cup champion. Been linked to Vegas like two years now. For a long time. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Is Kane still a target for the Golden Knights? 47 points, 50 games in Detroit. Uh, Seven months ago, even a Cub reporter by the name of Chris Golick had reported, citing Elliot Friedman's sources, that uh, signing Kane, um, he did not want to venture west because of the travel, the difficult travel schedule. He wanted to stay in the east, and he should have signed with VGK then uh, because uh, they actually play all their games at home. They don't travel. They're never, they're never. If he, if he wants holidays rigged. at home with the it's family, rigged. come to Vegas, right? Exactly. It's so darn rigged. It, it's funny. I was doing some research and I actually found an article I wrote, uh, gosh, probably about a year ago now. And it was probably right around now with the uh, free agency starting to loom. And it was, uh, the title was Patrick Kane to Vegas. No, thanks. So at the time I certainly, uh, wasn't too high on that. Um, I mean, listen, I'm, Obviously, grew up a Blackhawks fan. I'm still a Blackhawks fan. That has never changed. And I was at the United Center in 2007 when Patrick Kane scored his first unofficial goal. I say unofficial. It was in a shootout. I believe it was a shootout winner against one Dominic Hachik of the Detroit Red Wings. So there you go right there. That's uh, that, that's my Patrick Kane history. And uh, that is uh, 17 years ago if my uh, community college uh, – degree that I never got math uh, is accurate. So that's a walk down Patrick Kane memory lane. Let's look at some stats here. He's 35. He's going to be 36 in November, all right? 36 in November. Still producing around a point per game. Came tried to help came in tried to help the Rangers last year after uh basically at the deadline is when he started playing after he recovered. Uh logged 50 games last season with the Red Wings. 47 points, as you said earlier. Career totals, 1,230 games, 1,284 points, three Stanley Cups, 143 playoff games, 138 playoff points. So he checks a lot of boxes. Let's be clear. He checks a lot of boxes. How much might he cost? Here's the concern. And this is why I actually don't mind it all of a sudden. $2.75 million with the Red Wings last year. What can Patrick Kane really expect at this stage of his career? No one's going to, I think, line up for five or six million dollars, Tony. I don't think that's going to be the number. And if it is, I then good riddance, someone else can take him. But let's just assume Patrick Kane is going to cost three million dollars in the open market and the Vegas Golden Knights go knocking on that door. This means Jonathan Marchessault was not extended, also. I don't think there's going to be a path for uh, Kane and Marchessault in Vegas, but. Let's say it's $3 million. That still leaves the Golden Knights $3.1, $3.1 million to do a little bit of work with their RFAs and maybe, you know, a bargain bin, you know, a a Ross or Marshalls type of free agent signing. I don't mind it. I don't think. They're no longer going to be the Golden Maniacs or whatever they're called. They're going to be the Golden Geriatrics before long. VGK needs younger legs. This this ties into our second segment very nicely. Okay, but they need a player that can play 60 to 70 games, not 50 games at any at any cost, at any cost. And then where do you put him? Mark Stone plays the first 45. uh, Patrick Kane plays the last 42 games. There you go. Tony, see problem solved. Okay, or just have uh, one of the players that just stays at home, plays home games because he doesn't want to travel on the road. 
And uh, t- last last season, uh, 2023, this was a major topic on this program at the uh, trade deadline. And as you said, it's gone back even a couple of years. Uh, when did has that ship sailed already? As far as Patrick Kane in general? Yeah, just like trying to sign him here. I mean, listen, it's, it's June it's June 17th. We got uh, basically 11 days until, you know, things really heat up with the draft and the and the really when we'll start getting an idea where these free agents are going. So there's going to be one of these players, you know, once or twice a week we're going to talk about who pop up on the radar, and you know, we go up and back about it. And, I mean, here's what I like about Patrick Kane, honestly. Brandon Brisson, Valdor Afiev, what a fun player to learn from. As far as, I mean, Patrick Kane is a sniper. He's a great passer. He's 36 years old, so so some of those days are behind him. But he's probably still good for maybe a point in about 85% of his games. He's going to be good for, there's two minutes left. VGK needs a goal. Who who would you rather have, uh, you know, who would you rather have the puck go to? It's going to be Patrick Kane. He's fun. Dude is rocking a mullet back in 2010 before they were cool again. Apparently, mullets still aren't cool, but apparently they're a lot cooler now than they were. So, and he even like like in the playoffs, he even does like the three like lines in his hair and stuff, and, and a mullet. It, it's fun. But back to where I'm going here, I think Patrick Kane can be a good influence on like the four prospects in the organization who are, you know, trying to come up and crack the team. Starting with Dorofiev and uh, more Brendan Brisson. I think Brendan Brisson can learn a ton from Patrick Kane. We'll see if that's the path that it goes. But I mean, again, if it's $3 million or less, is it a lottery ticket worth scratching? I mean, I don't know. I don't hate it. I like it better this year than I did last year. I'll, I'll, I'll put it to you like that. You think he would mentor players like Dorfiev and Brisson? Well, I, he would I, knock them out of the lineup is what he would do. That's also fair, but Patrick Kane has been nothing but a great teammate. Um, Back in his younger days, he's got some stories about going up to uh, Wisconsin and the college towns and maybe having a little bit too much fun. But I think those days are behind him. He's a, a family man now, so hopefully a Vegas wouldn't, uh, you know, chew him up and spit him out like it has a lot of people. Um, but I think Patrick Kane would be a good role model in the Vegas Golden Knights organization. Um, Chicago, your favorite team. Uh, Kyle Davidson recently said to, to some level that he does not want Patrick Kane back there in Chicago. A lot of folks wanted him paired with Connor Bedard. What are your thoughts about uh, Chicago if he does indeed elect or try to go back there, Dan? I mean, I think it would be fun for the Blackhawks. I mean, there's nothing more fun than uh, you know being on West Madison Street, hearing Patrick Names get Patrick Names name Patrick. Kane's name <laughs> getting called for a goal and in the starting lineup and everything. I mean, I think that would be pretty remarkable, honestly. Um, I don't know. I mean, they went with Corey Perry last year at $4 million, I think. So why not Patrick Kane at $3 million? I mean, I don't know. Is there a package deal out here? This is probably stretching way out here. But uh, Jonathan Taves reportedly took the season off last year to heal and get better. I think it's long-term COVID stuff. I could be wrong. I don't know. But point being is Jonathan Taves took last season off. And as of, you know, months ago, he was trying to return for this year. So, I mean, let's bring the whole band here. Jonathan Taves on a million dollars, on a million dollar deal. Patrick Kane at $3 million. And uh, let's have some fun. Let's bring Chicago to Vegas. So you think that it's a good move if they could get Kane, even at $3 million. again, uh, that money, that cash is starting to shrink then when you talk about signing Jonathan March. That's why we so, didn't have a salary cap in Vegas. There is no salary cap. You're right. But whatever Patrick, there was. The only way Patrick Kane's coming is if, I think if, at least, is if he starts off on the LTIR. Is, or, or at LTIR, yeah. I mean, yeah. there could be, a, there could be um, a, a paper cut that does require a long-term healing process uh for this organization, you know, and everything. And so we'll see if, Canadian. Uh, what this happens cool. there. Yeah, you like that? I got a couple in there, Tony. I got a couple in there. But oh, listen, if Kelly McCrimmon thinks Patrick Kane is a lottery ticket worth scratching, I'm okay with it. And maybe a segue to the second segment, I'd much prefer 26 or 27-year-old free agents who are on the upward trajectory that they can get maybe before they hit their peak. But, um, yeah, I mean, Patrick Kane, maybe he's not the shiniest the new toy, but... 
he's he's a nice a nice toy that you might find in a, one of those Goodwill stores that still has some mileage on it. He could be a toy for a Misfit Island. That's what he could be. Yeah, coming, yeah, I guess, I guess. I'll yeah, take it. coming up next <laughs> is success sustainable. Oh, we had to go back to utilize that word. It's been such a long time. It has been. It has is been. It's success it's sustainable word. for the Golden Knights if the franchise keeps trading away picks and prospects. Man, you just that read that from my text next. message. I think that was pretty good. That's our topic next, right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. With Policy Genius, you could find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for a million dollars of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical. Policy Genius is convenient and time saving. It helps you to compare your options from uh, the top companies and their team of licensed experts. They are on hand to help you talk you, talk you through it and uh, talk to a team of award-winning agents who will walk you through the process step by step. One of the major points that we always stress about Policy Genius is you might not be as well covered as you think. Your work life insurance policy may not offer enough protection for your family's needs. And even worse, it may not come with you if you were to leave your current job. Policy Genius gives you unbiased advice from licensed experts and a support team. They have no incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. Thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot from customers who found that they are the best fit for all of their needs. So today, check life insurance off of your to-do list in no time at all with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash lockdown NHL or click on the link in the description as you will get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That is policygenius.com slash lockdown NHL. Back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights, start of a new week. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick reporting from Las Vegas. Of course, Fridays, it is WTF with the Friday, Saturday, sometimes the Chris and Chris Jr. show. Is it on hiatus? Is this summer vacation? Yeah, I think it's summer vacation. It's it's tough right now to, to you know, I mean, let's face it, all we're going to do is probably uh, to a lesser degree regurgitate a couple things you and I talked about throughout the week until some, some big VGK pops. So I think we're just kind of chilling right now. And um, I could definitely see once the Stanley Cup wraps up, maybe me and Chris kind of talking a little bit about that because we're watching that pretty closely. But otherwise, we're, uh, we're chilling like uh, William Carlson's hamstring was nuts. Oof. Um, we have not talked about Kelly McCrimmon's favorite PowerPoint buzzword, sustainability, in a while. Uh, at the 2023 entry draft, uh, we recall that he said the objective was to keep the cup winning roster together. And now, a year later, he's trying to tear it apart. He's going to implode it like the Tropicana Hotel. Um, okay, age starting to creep in. That's where we were going a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Again, we were talking about this. Uh, The current roster, the Golden Knights have uh, traded away a ton of assets. Uh, They'll have a first-round pick in the draft, uh, one in the sixth, two in the seventh. Uh, The third-rounder they gave away in the Hannafin trade, the fourth for Aiden Hill, the fifth to uh, the Flyers in the Hannafin trade. These deals, when are they all going to start to catch up to VGK? I mean, we're seeing it now, I think. We're relying on 30-year-old Tomas Hurdle, who's, uh, you know, going through what he's going through health-wise to hopefully, uh, you know, go experience some type of resurgence. I'm sure you mentioned everything else about Mark Stone and everything. And I mean, it's... I didn't, um, I didn't but you can. The point being is this roster was old two or three years ago. Mm. And it's not getting any younger, and the core of it is still there to a degree. So, so and you know, thirty-five-year-old Patrick Kane, then yeah, thirty-five-year-old Patrick Kane. There we go. Two years older than March or so. I mean, it's a concern, and we're talking about VGK possibly signing Patrick Kane to a one or a two-year deal. Who knows? Me a three-year deal the way VGK does things, um, and, and that's a concern right now. And you look at what's happening at some point the the chickens come to roost i think that's how that goes at some points 
it's going to catch up with the Golden Knights. Their Stanley Cup window shrinks, not not on a yearly basis, but on a daily basis. You never know what's happening with health and such. And we'll see how next season goes. You and I both have our concerns. I, I say it finishes more as a rebuilding type of year. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, if they sign Patrick Kane, it better not be a rebuilding year. Looking at just their situation right now, VGK has a first-round pick this year. No second, no third, no fourth, no fifth. They have a sixth, and they have two in the seventh. Okay, whoop you do right there. I think there. I just, said that. I, think I just said that. Uh, Did you do 25? Did you do the next two years after that? I didn't go there, but the okay. second-round pick I forgot was the compensatory pick that went to the Flyers Brilliant. for okay. 2018, not signing some player that they wanted them to take. Okay, go ahead. Fair enough, yeah. So no first-round picks in 2025, 2026. So at some points, this is going to be a concern. Now, the other side of this, can you continuously build a team through free agency? Because Mark Stone, that was a that was a trade. Jack Eichel, that was a trade. Tomas Hurdle, Noah Hannafin, the list goes on and on. These were players that came to the Golden Knights via trade. Who on the Golden Knights roster right now is a free agent signing from the open markets? And I'm going down the VGK list right now. Not Eichel, not Stone, not Hurdle, not Carlson, not Barbashev, uh, not Nicholas Swa. Brett Howden, I don't know how they acquired him, but that's not that big of a deal. Rangers. Robert Dorfi of Amadio, that was a waiver situation. March or so Chandler Stevenson was a trade. On the defensive side, Petrangelo, I believe that was a free agent signing. I could be wrong on that. Noah Hannafin trade, Theodore trade, McNabb draft, White Cloud was built within the organization, as was Nick Haig, Alec Martinez was a trade. So three or four years from now, it's going to be tough to keep building through free agency because they're not going to have the trade assets. I mean, Brennan Brisson is a nice trade asset, but okay, then what? Then what happens? Lucas Cormier, then what happens? It's going to be very difficult for the Golden Knights to build through free agency and find these 26 and 27-year-olds. Because remember, with the RFA rules, teams are basically, you're basically at the control of an NHL franchise until you turn 25 years old. So unless they're going to trade you, you have to basically wait until they're 26, 27 years old to even make a pitch to get them to join the organization. So this is a concern from a long-term perspective. Do we care about long-term in Vegas? Probably not. But three or four years from now, maybe once the 2030s start, and me and Tony are still uh, kicking on lockdown VGK, we might be talking about you know the San, the San Jose Sharks version uh, tank for uh, – Tank for Patrick Kane's kid in the in the draft in, in six years. I don't know. Yeah, the silver anniversary show. That's going to be a banger. Huge. Uh, you continue to give away all of these assets, right? If you're VGK, and then they really went overboard. We've talked about this before. They've gone overboard in signing these long term contracts that they are going to get stung with sooner or later. Eventually, it's bound to happen. An eight year deal here. Uh, what contract Hannafin are you deal. concerned about? I mean, the Han I mean, you're, Hannafin, you said eight years. That's the first one you're looking at. I mean, I don't know. I think Hannafin is going to be you good. You still have how least. many with Hurdle? And I don't know if he's back or whatever. I still have an odd feeling about that deal. Her no, the Hurdle situation is weird. That was, uh, that was a weird six contract. Six isn't it? What's damaged that? goods, I say. Uh, I think, is there still he six could be damaged goods. I mean, the Gold Knights have them until the end of 2930. Yeah. I think they get three or four productive years out of that. Do they get six productive years? No, uh, no. Carlson, another one. Yeah, I mean, we can argue about that one, but at least that one looks a little better than it did. He's 31 years old. Carlson's 31 years old. I had no idea. He's not chilling anymore. He's not chilling, no. He's not no. chilling. He's not chilling He's anymore. not chilling at home. We know Petrangelo that. is the one that I think we're going to really – wonder about probably starting this year honestly yes yes there are it, the, the, i'm talking about a downward slope for a lot of these players and they just went overboard i believe and a lot of these uh, times they have signed players just based on one productive season and that was aiden, it aiden hill 4.9 there you go there's your first one right there william there's carlson yeah i mean God. he got hit pretty good obviously after uh after a couple decent seasons early i think his contract actually kicked in 
the year after, after. He, got, he had all those goals. He was um, going to arbitration. They signed that one year deal, and then right, they exactly, just gave him all the money because of BLTs with the boss. Mark Stone at thirty two. I mean, we'll see. I mean, I'm 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 more bullish on Mark Stone than you are next year, as far as I'm not from a health perspective. You said you went crazy on that. What was your? Total He's playing seventy five games like, next year. He's playing seventy five games next oh, year. Oh, the it. fans were going bananas with that one. That was book it, book it, book it, book it. I mean. Otherwise, looking up and down this lineup. Click, I mean, are you needing clicks again and clout? I need clicks and clout. Yes, I need clicks and clout. I need. I'm trying to upgrade from the Seven Eleven dollar coffee to a uh, to a Starbucks every now and then. But if it's dollar coffee from Seven Eleven, so be it. Coming up next, the Oilers avoid the sweep with Saturday's eight to one win over the Panthers. We'll talk about the Stanley Cup. What did I say? Eight to one? No, I was agreeing with you. I was laughing. That was eight to one. Okay. Did I say seven to one? No, you said it. You're good. Okay. I just want to make sure. It is a Monday. Uh, back with more Stanley I'll Cup talk right Monday. after this on uh, Locked On Golden Knights. We still have the series going on in the NBA and the NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks to bet on point spreads, on money lines, player props, and much, much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make every playoff shot count. That is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights from Las Vegas, Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick reporting. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. Find us wherever you get your podcast, and please subscribe to Locked On Golden Knights. Of course, Fridays is WTF. Saturdays, sometimes, it is the Chris and Chris Jr. Show, the YouTube exclusive. Are the Oilers going to bring their good luck charm, Shania Twain, with them to Sunrise, Florida? That was That's cringeworthy, that video. All the players just kind of out there, half the guys in their underwear just <laughs> high five her. She walks by. That was a little strange. I'm not going to lie. You know, you know what I like the best? She jumped over the equipment bags without like stumbling. So she's she's good. She's still good. She's still the one. You know, she's cranking the sun. There you go. She's cranking the siren at VGK games. Now she's hanging with the boys in the locker room. Make runner. up your mind. Make up your mind. Imposter. <laughs> game number five on Tuesday. Uh, the Oilers in the last game chasing Sergei Bobrovsky Saturday night pulled five minutes into the second period. Uh, does this victory give the Oilers a ton of momentum? It gets very interesting if they go to South Florida, wherever the heck sunrise is. If they go to South Florida and they pull off a win and then it heads back to Edmonton. And that's the series I think we've all been looking for. I'm hoping for drama at this point. I mean, obviously, if we get to game six, there could be a game seven. And that's certainly uh, what any hockey fan is looking forward to. Maybe it's not, maybe unless it's your team in the final, but that's what any hockey uh, fan is looking forward to. And we were hoping for an exciting series, and it hasn't been. It's still not an exciting series, let's be honest with ourselves here, but at least there's a glimmer of hope. Does eight to one matter in the grand scheme of things? Does it put a doubt, a lot of doubt into the minds of the Florida Panthers? I don't think so. It's one game. Uh, but McDavid had the quote after the game. Uh, we want to drag him back to Alberta. That's a pretty fun quote right there. I, I like that. Um, Florida doesn't want to fly up there. We, we joked about uh, Phil Kessel's comments about uh, his pregame speech before game five. I don't want to fly back down to South Florida. You guys better close this out. I'll be up in the up in the press box eating hot dogs eating while, hot we're dogs. At, while I'm watching yeah. you guys. That's pretty good, good right? Good. Yeah, it's good. Um, so, I mean... It could be fun. I mean, listen, there's doubt now, right? Bobrowski, all of a sudden it goes from how amazing of the series he was having in the Conn Smythe favorite to you're lumping together this year's stats and last year's Stanley Cup final stats. What does he have? Stat lines of eight, nine, and like six or seven goals against now in five and in, in four of his, in, in three of his last five Stanley Cup final games or something like that. So, they got to him, and they obviously got to the backup goalie as well. Who cares about that? But at least it's, so it's something. McDavid gets a goal on the board. Okay, that's something. McDavid just, what, set the record for most points, points. In, the, in the playoff? Um, most assists. Most assists. Uh, 32, I think it was, yeah. At this goes uh, six games, McDavid has to be the con Smythe win, lose, or draw, doesn't he? Ooh. 
If this I'm goes six sure games, McDavid has to be the con Smythe win, lose, or draw. Okay, so you're giving up on the Bob like Don Cherry did. Don Cherry. Oh, Don Cherry fired off. He comes out of the woodwork. He comes off the top rope with, hey, this guy was he affiliated with? Is he still a sports net guy, or is he just like no, randomly, no. boom, there's a camera in front of him. He puts he on a fun thing. fired everywhere. Goes. Yeah. He's okay. like me. He got fired everywhere. That's pretty awesome. He, know, he, knows, he knows the fire exits better than you, I guess, in Toronto. The reverse sweep is still in play. I think uh, I still it said I still said when they were down uh, three to nothing or two nothing. Remember, I said ah, I would bet plus money on Edmonton because they have that firepower. You never know if it's going to kick in. And then Knobloch was saying, "Hey, we've been hanging around these uh, games. I think we're about to break loose," and they did. And I they mean, did. Game one. Every metric pointed to the Oilers winning that game. Obviously, Bobrowski was the X factor that as to why the, the Florida Panthers stole the first game of this series. Um, the second game, Edmonton did have a lead. Third game was tied, I think, coming out of the first or something like that. So now you start looking at the series a little bit differently, and this could e just as easily be 2-2 two -two as, e as much as it's 3-1 right now. So as bad as Edmonton was for pockets of these games, and they were really bad, especially in game three uh, when um, when the, uh, Stuart Skinner uh, just foobarred that puck from behind that. That was absolutely awful, and that's obviously what opened the floodgates in that game. So now you look at things a little bit differently, and if, 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 if McDavid and Dreisaitl and Dylan Holloway now, Dylan Holloway, rookie, starting to pop all of a sudden, good for me in my sports card world. We actually put a, pulled a big Dylan Holloway rookie card last night. Um, so we'll see if McDavid can make good on his statement about dragging the series back to Alberta. And I mean, if this thing's go, if this thing goes six, you have to think it goes seven and who in the right mind is betting against McDavid and dry in a winner take all game for the Stanley cup. You think uh, Edmonton would bring in Pete DeBoer with his perfect game seven record <laughs> there as a consultant, maybe. That, I mean, out. maybe, maybe, I don't know. I mean, maybe, uh, Honestly, Paul Maurice is probably the one that makes that phone call because they're 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 buds. They're they're the same coach. They are they are the same coach. We'll see if uh, one of them can can crawl out of uh, the Stanley Cup, the, the shadow of the Stanley Cup, or Paul Maurice's uh, situation. His brother, who keeps winning Kelly Cups, they flew all these people, friends, family, etc., up there to uh, to Edmonton. Down? Florida. No, it's, no, no. Edmonton is down from Florida, Tony. They took the long way. It's down. If you, if you're Bruce Cassidy, it's definitely down. It's south of here. Uh, and they, you know what? Cassidy should talk to Patrick Kane about the travel because, oh, it's just like right down the road, so to speak, right? Or right up there. So it actually is up there and miles traveled by the time the dust settles, but they get the holiday treatment and stuff like that. They get, they get the PTO days. They get the extra PTO days. So uh, game number five will be on Tuesday night. Is that when? Okay, so Florida is going to fly in on Tuesday. Is that the plan? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Florida is probably still in Edmonton right now, eating somewhat poutine. Is that what it's called? Poutine, poutine. poutine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about all the activity so there? This is one of the things that could really come back to haunt Florida because a lot of funny business after the whistle, and it cost them a five on three goal by Nugent Hopkins in that game on Saturday night. Uh, they have to keep their collective cool. I'm kind of surprised. First of all, the series price had a major shift. Uh, Florida was minus 3,000. We talked about this on Friday's show. Florida was minus 3,000 to basically like the 20 to 1 or 18 to 1 for the Oilers. Now Florida's down to minus 1,100. You still got to wager 1,100 to win a single $100 bill, but that's a lot better than wagering $3,000. And now Edmonton, you're you're only I say only you're getting you're getting seven to one on your investment versus fifteen or eighteen to one, whatever that that line was. So that's interesting, right there. You mentioned the after the whistle stuff. Honestly, the way that game went, I'm I'm surprised Florida didn't do more in the third period of that game, trying to drag the fight to the Oilers and stuff. I mean, I, I said that I thought game three might be the win the lose the battle, win the war type of moment for the Florida Panthers. They had their chance in the third period to play like uh, play the rat version of hockey that they can be at times. 
Matt Kachuk, obviously the leader in that department. And they took it pretty easy in that game. And the Oilers kind of steered away from it too. I think both teams said, okay, this game's done. Let's get out and let's see what happens uh, on on Tuesday night. All these days off, extra days off, annoying. Um, but yeah, it's going to, we got a series maybe. We might just might have a series. If this thing gets to game six, that's my, that's my hope. We, we at least get some drama out of it. I want drama. Uh, yeah, longer that. hockey season too. We appreciate yeah, everyone tuning in. It sucks thinking it's going to be over no later than next Monday. I don't like that. We appreciate you tuning in, everyone, especially our everydayers. Uh, of course, today is a big day, as uh, we'll probably get that 9 p.m. news dump from VGK saying that the ECHL team is moving to Tahoe because the official announcement is coming from Savannah around 11 o'clock airtime uh, today. Uh, don't forget Friday's WTF, Saturday's reserved for the Chris and Chris Jr. show. And I say reserved because if they want to do it, they can. It's reserved for you there. The YouTube exclusive. Please Very subscribe. Thin pencil. Very thin pencil. It's written in number with. two pencil. They still make those. Uh, they do. They, they do. do. Okay. They do. Uh, of course, we appreciate you tuning Kids in. Kids still writing cursive, Tony. That tilts me. Okay, keep going. Thanks so much. Of course, we'll see you tomorrow right here on Locked On Golden Knights. For my man, Chris Golick, I'm Tony Cardasco. So long for now, and please take care.